So welcome back to the first video for this week of Favorite Friday. In this case, we are going to Florida, because you know, shit's always happening in Florida. Um, this case, as I may say, does involve a death row inmate, and yes, she did genuinely escape death row. Uh, hence why she was at one point so infamously known. Of course, definitely not the case should be interesting. Uh, if a movie comes out, just a heads up. Uh, highly doubt she'll be watching this, but by all day look- Oh. But shit, if Viola Davis is having me watching this, girl, I want you to play this bitch because I swear, I'm like, I'm like, I, I can see similarities in like Viola and Marie by like the looks. And you know, Viola is always doing like these diverse like acting roles. So, you know, maybe just a heads up. So, anyway, with that being said, let's get straight into the video. But if I lay down and I play dead and I stay dead, maybe you'll get sick of being the monster out of my head under my Argentine was born on August 8th, 1933. Uh, that is not her maiden name. That is the name she gets when she gets married. So Marie drops out of school when she's in sixth grade. Um, so then nothing really is said about her between sixth grade and age 22. So at age 22, she gets arrested for forgery. Um, I guess those charges got dropped because when she's 23, she's working at this motel for like 75 cents an hour, which, you know, obviously that's like very low, but like this is like back when things were way cheaper and I guess that was like a normal rate. And so she gets paid 75 cents an hour and she's over cleaning and in the middle of cleaning she realizes she can make a lot more she just robs the place. So apparently she like robs the manager and like ties herself up and the police get there and they genuinely believe she's a victim because she's a woman and all that shit. And then they see like these cigarette butts that are like down below her and they're like how are you able to smoke if you're like tied up? So then she confesses, she's arrested, she's charged with robbery obviously. And so, uh, 24, she winds up committing larce larceny and, uh, larceny and robbery. At 28, she passed some bad checks. And at 31, she did larceny and vehicle theft. And so, uh, fast forward to, like, July 4th, 1964. Uh, Marie basically kills her husband, uh, Lester Jack Arrington, and, and on a beach in Florida. And so, and so, um, Lester was apparently, like, a former police officer, and he was a cur at the time he died, he was a bouncer at a club in Miami, apparently. And so Marie didn't even turn herself in until like the next day. Uh, her lawyer would of course say, oh, self-defense, so you know, she can get off basically free. And, because it's the South, so you know, if you say self-defense and they can prove it's self-defense, they usually do let you go. And so a witness named Nathaniel would come up and say that he did see Jack ch choking Marie and he, he basically was the one that pulled him off. So obviously that helps in the self-defense favor. So of course, police were never able to find the murder weapon, even though she shot him. So you should be able to find the gun. Marie would say in an interview years later that she actually buried the gun with Jack as to why they never could find it. So of course, I guess they never like dug up Jack and was just like, you know what? We're not even gonna do it. So they sentenced her to manslaughter. She gets 20 years. And so in 1967, um, she has a son. Don't know how old the son is, but apparently she had a son with Lester at one point. His name is Lloyd Dean. He and a, him and the friend girl rob a grocery store in Leesburg, Florida. His prosecutor, his, oh my gosh, his defense attorney basically recommends like plea guilty so you get like a lighter sentence, you can avoid trial and all that good shit. And keep in mind, nobody died, no injuries, and only $60 was stolen. But back then, $60 probably, $60 to get you a lot more back then than can now, basically. So even though no one died, nobody was injured, her son, Marie's son Lloyd gets life while the friend only got probation. So of course, this pisses Marie off. Um, apparently there was a daughter that also, that she also used Bob Pierce, the defense attorney, to prosecute for, and she got jail time as well. So basically, Marie feels Bob has failed her children. So of course, since she felt that Bob, um, had failed her children, she decides we're just gonna go find him and kill him. And so she just happened to remember, but she's on bond for manslaughter. So she gets bonded out on her manslaughter charge, and she's just out on the street, I guess like a waiting trial. Don't know for how long she was supposed to be on bond, but she was on bond. So I guess bond back then wasn't that much. And so basically, on April 22nd, um, 1968, she goes to Bob's office to confront him to kill him. Because, you know, you, you failed my children. They're both in jail, even though they're both guilty of what they did. But they got, like, harsh sentences for, like, small crimes, pretty much. And so she goes to his office. He's not there. 
Instead, his secretary, uh, Vivian June Reader, she is there instead. And so Viv Vivian June Reader was born June 15, 1930 in Indiana. Uh, when she was 19, she moved to Leesburg in Florida, remember, from Louisville, Kentucky. And apparently she'd been a public, she'd been a, sec she'd been a secretary of a public defender since she was 24. And at the time this incident happened, she was 37. So about 13 years. She had two sons, um, Bobby and David, and a daughter named Leanne, and she was married to someone whose nickname was Tex. So June, of course, would, uh, basically gets kidnapped by Marie. They take her to a secondary spot. Um, I guess she decides since I can't kill Bob, I'm going to kill a secretary. So she does. She shoots, Jim, she shoots June multiple times. And then runs her over. So I guess she stole June's car while in the process of kidnapping her. Because then June basically gets run over by her own car. After being shot multiple times. To ensure that she would die. And so uh, I guess the police were desperate to like find like, what happened to Vivian. Because they called in a psychic to help. And her car is found two days later. And her body is found in the woods. Before she is caught, she breaks into the home of Joy... Oh, Judge Troy Hall, who apparently is the same judge that gave her son the life sentence. So I guess she was planning on killing him too. Um, they eventually, I guess, like got a warrant, or maybe didn't get a warrant. You know, it's sixty. Who who knows? They go in her room and they they go so find her house. Go into her room specifically. They find notes that basically incriminate her in this in this murder. And so basically, these notes are like threatening Troy's wife. And they threatened to dismember Vivian if her kids, her kids aren't released from jail. And so a taxi driver would come out and say that he had dropped Marie off half a block away from the um from where the murders had on the morning of April 22nd. Like, it's like if you, if you were to drop her off and there, you could pinpoint her there. But no, we, we get dropped off some blocks away. And so uh, her, the murder weapon used in this murder... The gun uh, was apparently lent to her by her landlord and was never returned because that was considered evidence in a murder. On December 6, 1968, Marie is sentenced to death by electric chair. She was put in a low security room in a prison hospital. On March 1st, 1969, she escapes from the from death row pretty much through a screen window. In May of 1969, so only two months later, she's added to the FBI list and apparently is the second woman to ever be added to the FBI list. Because apparently the first one, was, her name was like Ruth, and this was around like World War II. But Marie's like the second woman to ever be added. So that's a pretty big deal. So in March of 1972, doesn't get an exact date, apparently she is caught and arrested again. Uh, she basically went on to pursue a whole new life in New Orleans and was working as a waitress. And so she would keep track of all the, the, her, the murder she committed over, basically the murder of Vivian and the manhunt going on for her since this woman technically just escaped death row and her being asked to the FBI list. So she said to remind her of the Wild Wild West and that it was very entertaining for her. And so uh, obviously when you escape prison, um, time's going to be added to your sentence. If That's if you do get caught because some people somehow would just live their entire lives without getting caught. So for those who do get refound and are brought back in, time is obviously added to your sentence. So 10 years gets added. And then in August of 1972, her death sentence went to life in prison. The U.S. Supreme Court declared the death penalty unconstitutional. And so uh, Bob the Defender, he died in 1990 at 74. Don't know what he died from. I, w I would hope it's natural causes, but I mean, he's 74, so more than likely. And Marie, of course, being born in 1993, she's going to eventually die. She died May 10th, 2014 from heart problems. And so, yeah, that was the case of a woman who escaped death row. Of course, of course, that was definitely an interesting one because I never thought someone could actually escape death row. But I guess back then, death row was exactly... She was in a low security prison, so that was able to choose to escape. Because they put her, like, in a max security or a federal... Yeah, she more than likely wouldn't have gotten out unless she had, like, inside connections. So, yeah, with that being said, uh, that's the case regarding the death penalty i guess there you go and so if you want any more cases of women that were on death row at any point regardless of how many murders they committed definitely let me know and i'll see what i can do and i'll see you if it fails the next one bye so with the play dead will you regret everything that you did that you said i don't think you understand what you're doing
And my heart's black and blue from the bruising I feel like when I'm with you I'm losing I feel like you think that this amusing Sitting there gaslighting and confusing Was it me? Is it me? Am I deluded? I'm the one who's always sorry the conclusion